You know what's awesome? Ninjas. You know what's better than ninjas? Radical ninjas. And you know what's better than radical ninjas? Video games are about radical ninjas. Let's talk about Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja for the NES. Kid Nicky was developed by Tosei and published by Data East for the NES in 1987. You control Radical Ninja Kid Nicky, who, according to the back of the box, is a miniature madman out to rescue his spike-haired girlfriend, Princess Margot, from the Stone Wizard? Of course, this was an NES game in the late 80s, so clearly there's more to the story than that. Kid Nicky was originally called Kaikets Yanchamaru and released by Irem in Japanese arcades in 1986. It was brought to American arcades by Data East, but not before Yanchamaru got a makeover that made him more appealing to American audiences of the late 80s. His top-knot hairstyle was ditched in favor of a messy flat top with a bitchin' rat tail. They probably assumed no one in America could pronounce Yanchamaru, so he became Kid Nicky and was given the radical attitude that was all the rage at the time. Ah, to go back to those simpler days. While here in the States we only got the first game in the series, Japan got three sequels. Kaikets Yanchamaru 2, Karakuri Land, and Kaikets Yanchamaru 3, Taikets Zoringen for the Famicom, as well as Genso Yanchamaru for the Game Boy. However, we did get Irem's similar game, Hammer and Harry, for arcades and NES, called Daiku no Gensan in the Land of the Rising Sun. And while Kaikets Yanchamaru's art has the hero looking suspiciously like Dragon Ball's Son Goku, at least he looks like a ninja and is holding a katana. The North American version portrays the hero as a muscle shirt wearing meathead brandishing a broadsword. At least the cart's label's a really bright shade of pink, and that makes it easy to find on a shelf. But that's all a bunch of boring information. Radical ninjas have no use for history. Radical ninjas are all about action! Luckily, Kid Nicky is chock full of delicious, satisfying action. Forget all about flashy combos. Kid Nicky defeats his enemies with one quick spin of his katana, and how he manages that without cutting himself is a mystery for the ages. On the flip side, one hit and Nicky's down for the count too. This delicate balancing act is the crux of Kid Nicky's addictive gameplay, where one wrong move will send you back to try again. The important part of a feature like this, though, is that it never feels overly punishing or frustrating. If you die, it's because you didn't know the enemy pattern yet, or you just got lazy and didn't react quick enough. It's challenging, but it's not overbearing, which will have you smiling rather than cursing and breaking controllers. The enemies you come across are pretty varied, with ninja versions of Shy Guys from Mario 2, fire-breathing frogs, and bubbles, which are apparently a ninja's greatest weakness. Kid Nicky is tough, but there are secrets to find that make things easier. Each level has multiple hidden areas, like the one you access at this spot in level 2. Defeat enough of the spawn to clone ninjas tossed at you, and you get a bonus that changes your clothes white and grants you an extra hit. Climbing this tree in level 2 takes you to a secret room chock full of bonus points. Also, attacking the scroll at the end of the level when the clock has a second count divisible by 12 will grant you a 1-up. Some of the best parts of the game, though, are the boss battles. Featuring off-the-wall designs, they're both entertaining and challenging at the same time. Attacking a boss in the wrong place, or even in the right place sometimes, has Nikki's sword spiraling away and sticking into the wall, so you'll need to retrieve it before striking again. Just hearing that probably sounds like it's a cheap way to artificially increase the difficulty and make bosses harder than they should be, but those short moments of complete vulnerability add a really great sense of tension to the game's bigger encounters. Honestly, the toughest part of Kid Nicky is the platforming. The aforementioned bubble section has caused most of my play sessions to come to a screeching halt. It's definitely a product of the era, and the game's arcade routes begin to show through the seams. There is a secret to skipping this section entirely, but I'll let you discover that on your own. The game is just a blast to play. The controls are tight and responsive, and the way enemies fly off the screen when attacked is super satisfying. The graphics aren't anything special, but the game does have a very charming look to it that makes great use of the NES's color palette. The music is fun and catchy, and will probably have you tapping your foot the next day at work as it plays on repeat in your head. I'm also a really big fan of the encouraging attaboy message after every level. So Kid Nicky's easy to get a hold of. You can get the card alone for about $5 on eBay, but a box copy is going to run you about $30 to $40. It's really up to you though, I mean, how much do you like hot pink? Kid Nicky Radical Ninja took a solid, enjoyable action platformer featuring very Japanese design, and infused its marketing and presentation with late 80s Americana, and it fortunately lost nothing in translation. The game's great controls and addictive action still hold up today and make a great addition to anyone's NES library. And remember, when times are tough, 
and the chips are down, Ninja School will help you.